most of you aren't subscribed. Make sure to slice the subscribe button, as it helps out the channel. Without further ado, as Fran continues to swing her blade, she realizes that she may have underestimated her enemies, which continue to press her. Gripping her blade harder, she declares that she not only wants to borrow our MC's power to look strong, but wants to be able to masterfully use and grow her own unique skills, in order to overcome challenges. Hearing Fran's words, our MC realizes that he had been ordering and dictating Fran's path, but now he understands that he must only follow and assist what Fran chooses, not to choose what he believes is best for Fran. As the evening sun begins to set, we see Fran stand victorious against the initial swarm, having reached level 12 all by herself. Returning to Garrus, he's shocked to learn that Fran and our MC had just finished slaying hundreds of goblins, wanting Garrus to mend Fran's armor, so she can head back to the forest. Apparently, after slaying the first wave of goblins, Fran had discovered a cave where the goblins reside. But before Fran can dive in, our MC recommends they reset for now, and come back when they've rested. As our MC is collecting the goblins' crystal cores, they are startled by the adventurers Fran had saved, having brought reinforcements. Believing Fran to be at least D rank, Fran tells them about the goblin cave deeper in, which one of the dwarfs mentions that this wasn't here before. Deducing that the cave is as big as a dungeon, the adventurers recommend Fran report this to the guild master, whilst they stay and watch. Speaking to Donadrond and the guild master, Fran with the help of our MC, is able to report her findings, and the amount of goblins she had slayed. But when she mentioned that none of the goblins had decided to retreat during the battle, the guild master became alerted, stating that the goblins that she had fought were most likely forced out of the cave, meaning that the other goblins within the cave must be far more dangerous. Asking Donadron to assemble any adventurers that can immediately be dispatched to deal with the sudden goblin cave. Commending Fran's hard work, the guild master decides to promote her from G to F rank. Gathering around a mini altar, Garrus is able to instantly repair Fran's armor, charging her 10,000 gold. But due to the nature of the altar, it becomes more expensive with every repair, on the same beaten armor. Having never been in a dungeon, Garrus tells Fran that dungeons randomly spawn, being willed into existence by the god of chaos. Spawning a core randomly, a random monster is chosen to be the dungeon boss, along with the design and rewards of the dungeon randomly created as well. Before our MC departs, Garrus says that he will finish crafting the requested sword, before they enter the dungeon. As the two head to their rooms, our MC checks out Fran's newly acquired stats, having pushed herself physically, and had been exhausted through constantly using healing magic. Patting Fran on the head, our MC heads to the bath, but Fran tags along, loving baths as they remind her of her parents. Running into Nell, they have a chat, as Nell praises Fran's feet, learning that she'll be fighting in the upcoming raid on the Goblin Cave. Nell also mentions the Knight's Brigade, knights meant to protect humans, but due to their captain hating adventurers, the knights had refused to help with the raid. Continuing, Nell wishes Amanda, an a rank adventurer, and the strongest in the town were present, but sadly is investigating the mess our MC caused ages ago. Changing topics, Fran asks if Nell knows anything about the gods that govern this world, which Nell responds that she knows that there were ten great gods consisting of, the god of sun, moon, oceans, earth, fire, storms, forests, beasts, death and finally chaos. Asking about how there is no god of war, Nell states that there used to be a god of war, but the god of war sadly was consumed by evil, attempting to rule over the other gods, but was ultimately slayed. The god of war's body was cut up, and spread across the world, with some of the god's remnants, evolving into the very first fiends and goblins, making these creatures descendants of pure evil. Realizing that Fran had fallen asleep, our MC takes Fran back to her room, tucking her in, as he personally wonders how much more he can learn about this world. The next day, Fran and our MC greet Garrus, as Garrus presents our MC with the sword he had requested, removing the sword and in place our MC will fit snugly in the case. As an added bonus, Garrus shows how our MC can use telepathy to unsheath himself, impressing our duo. Just like that, they head off, with Garrus wishing the two the best. At the meeting area for the raid, Fran can't help but hold her excitement, as Donadrond begins making announcements. Stating that they have confirmed the base is filled with goblins, 
he states that their primary objective is to kill the king and queen, and then set their sights on the dungeon master and the dungeon's core. Before Donadrond can say anything else, several goblins begin attacking the adventures, forcing them to scatter and break formation. Wondering if the goblins had planned for this, our MC states that they should head in first and slay the incoming waves, to allow the adventures outside to regain their formation. Moving closer to the cave, Fran notices several goblins back away, realizing that her new goblin killer title is quite useful. Helping out a pinned adventure, our MC instructs Fran to ignore absorbing the crystal cores, until they are away from any adventurers. Making use of the Sabertooth's unique skill, our MC had slayed, Fran begins walking on air, moving closer to the cave. Enchanting her blade with flames, she begins blasting the entrance, cutting off the goblins from continuously flowing out towards the adventurers. Leaving the remaining goblins outside to Donadrond and the adventures, our MC and Fran make their way into the cave. Deep in the cave, we see a goblin, able to summon a mysterious creature. Seeing Fran run off alone, Donadrond and a dwarf begin carving their way through the goblin swarm, using Fran's courageous acts as inspiration to catch up and not let her take all the glory. Back with Fran, we see her swiftly running deeper and deeper into the cave, all whilst our MC advises Fran to be more cautious in here than when she fought the goblins out in the forest. Easing Fran a bit, our MC states that in the worst case scenario, they can easily use an expensive feather item they've purchased recently to instantly teleport to safety, but nonetheless, our MC loves how courageous Fran is. Running into some goblins, our MC splits his mind beginning to instruct Fran on who to kill and who to leave for Donadrond and the adventurers. Spotting two stronger ones, Fran severs their bodies, allowing our MC to absorb their crystal cores, whilst catching their corpses, to leave no mess behind. Leaving three for the others, Fran continues to evade and slay goblins as she dives deeper and deeper, to a point where our MC is able to point out how good Fran has become collecting the goblins' crystal cores. Happy that our MC praised her, Fran is forced to refocus, prioritizing the incoming goblins, whilst leaving the rest. Suddenly, Fran's path is thwarted by tens of goblins, with all the skills our MC already have. With no other choice, our MC steps up, splitting his mind, in order to cast two simultaneous fire javelin spells. Conjuring multiple fire projectiles, that on impact explode and take out the goblins blocking Fran. Praising our MC, our MC notes that he had tried to teach Fran this once but failed, but deduces that since he does not have a human brain, he's able to surpass what is humanly possible. Having reached a tunnel, leading down the cave, they realize that they've almost reached the second floor, where the boss most likely will be residing. Using various skills, to locate incoming goblins, our MC spots two hobgoblins, which Fran scares away, tailing them to where the dungeon master could be. Now with Fran and our MC sensing a strange aura emanating from one of the cave's entrances, they both brace for what is to come. Cutting to Donadrond and the adventurers, they all continue to chase after Fran, noting how she had left them a decent amount of goblins to keep them distracted, but is still quite little, compared to what they were expecting. As the dwarf wonders what this Fran girl is, Donadrond states that Fran has a mastery of seven, making her a master and a high-tier adventurer for her age. Hoping that she does not overestimate her own abilities, they continue after Fran. Back with Fran, we see her perched above the entrance, able to spot the Goblin King and Queen. Reminded of when he had slayed a Goblin King, our MC notes that when the King is endangered, most of his underlings swarm around him, making it hard for Fran to engage immediately. Instead our MC will bombard them with spells, allowing Fran to take out the King and Queen, whilst they try to recover. Splitting his mind once again, our MC lights up the king and queen, allowing Fran to close in, but when the smoke clears, Fran is saddened to see our MC's fire spell wipe out not only the weaker goblins, but the king and queen too. With the remaining goblins fleeing, Fran wonders what else is there to do, but our MC says they should focus on slaying the dungeon master next, as they make their way through a mysterious door. As Fran happily trots through the gate, the door suddenly closes Fran in forcing her to begin watching for danger. With different specks of light suddenly illuminating the room, our MC realizes that they are being attacked by hundreds of bugs, but they are quite low class. Using his telekinesis to hold the bugs still, our MC instructs Fran to slaughter all of them, 
treating them as bonus bugs, meant to easily increase her stats. With several minutes passing, our MC realizes that there are still too many, noticing that a bug leader is continuously spawning them, explaining the endless swarm. With our MC shooting spells to displace the leader, Fran follows up, severing the boss and ending the battle. Having acquired new skills and items from the swarm, the two suddenly notice another door, with a powerful presence behind it. Comparing the aura to creatures he's slayed, our MC notes that the aura may be greater than the rank C slime he faced in the forest. Realizing it would be best to prepare, our MC begins buffing Fran, giving her increased resistance, increased physical abilities, increased reaction speed, increased healing and best of all, promises to make Fran curry, as long as she's able to make it out of this fight alive. Cautiously entering, Fran greets a mysterious creature, waiting all this time for our duo's arrival. With our MC scanning the floating creature, he realizes that they are looking at a greater demon, creatures that are at least rank B, able to take out an entire kingdom by themselves, with this one in particular having a skill steal ability. Believing Fran to be just a weak human, the demon gives Fran props for being able to make it all the way to it, but suddenly the dungeon master appears. Begin a goblin that can talk, the dungeon master insults Fran, stating that their plan was to invade the kingdom, but since their goblin king is gone, they will have to resummon another one, using the dungeon cores as sustenance. As the demon silences the dungeon master, the demon brings out its blade, charging at Fran, who places 500 mana into our MC. Realizing that the demon has a similar mana conductivity skill, our MC realizes that the demon's blade would have cut right through him. As Fran and the demon clash swords, Fran uses a spell to disarm the demon, lunging at him, but the demon smirks, having returned his blade to his hand with a unique skill, only to smash Fran into the ground. Praising Fran's sword skills, the demon suddenly disappears, reappearing behind Fran, cutting off her hands. Seeing Fran in a moment of shock, our MC immediately dashes to Fran's side, casting a firewall to scare away the demon, as he reattaches Fran's hands. Apologizing for not reacting fast enough, Fran stares down the demon, as the demon wonders what type of skill Fran is using to navigate her sword so well. Disappearing, the demon begins playing mind games, slashing and disappearing suddenly. As Fran fends of the attacks, our MC figures out that the demon is using Fran's shadow. Ordering Fran to jump, she slashes the air, infusing it with poison, which is able to scratch the demon. Using this opening, the demon retaliates, shooting a spell of his own. Having dodged the demon's projectile, Fran realizes that the poison has little to no effect on the demon. Realizing that this boss may be too hard for Fran, our MC instructs Fran to leave with the feather item, but Fran refuses, wanting to grow stronger, and taste our MC's curry dish. As Fran charges the demon, she's able to evenly trade blows, but the demon suddenly uses his skill steal ability stating that he has now taken Fran's sword ability, making him far stronger than Fran. Declaring that Fran is now powerless without her stolen swordsmanship skills, the demon rushes at Fran, but Fran miraculously evades, slashing the demon, surprising the creature, knowing that it had landed its skill still on Fran. Our MC deduces that since he is sharing all his skills, including the swordsmanship ability with Fran, the demon is unable to steal borrowed skills. Seeing that his demon summon may be at a disadvantage, the dungeon master summons some goblins, to help defeat Fran. But before the goblins can attack Fran, the demon slaughters them all, demanding that the dungeon master nor anyone else intervene in its duel. Turning to Fran, the demon declares that it's done holding back, and that it would much prefer to head to the surface, and slaughter humans. Channeling a dense dark spell, the demon begins compressing huge amounts of dark magic, aiming and blasting it right at Fran. Having heard the noise, Donadrond and the other adventurers try to break down the massive door, separating them from Fran. Having barely survived the impact of that powerful spell, our MC reasons that they stand no chance against the demon, as Fran is currently too inexperienced. Attempting to use the magic feather to escape, Fran stops our MC, stating that if they don't end things now, the demon will make its way to the surface, and wreak havoc. Asking for our MC to lend her strength, Fran begins dodging projectiles, the demons send at her, all whilst our MC thinks about the best option. Knowing that Fran is still remaining calm, even in the face of unbeatable odds, 
our MC can't help but lend Fran strength, wanting to see her grow. Assessing the demon's potential, our MC knows that the demon's level surpasses Fran, along with its mana pool, making it able to cast endless spells. On top of that, it seems to be very resilient to Fran's physical attacks, forcing our MC to dig deep, attempting to figure out the demon's weakness. At the same time, Fran pushes herself to the limit, as the demon continues to stain the battlefield with its dark magic explosions, able to knock Fran off her feet. With some advice from our MC, Fran gets up, continuing to evade and buy time for our MC to figure out a plan. Suddenly our MC realizes something suspicious, although the demon is destroying the cave, trying to harm Fran, it seems as if the demon is avoiding hitting the dungeon master. Testing out his theory, our MC fires a spell at the dungeon master, which forces the demon to intercept the spell. Flashing back, Fran had learned from Donadron that upon the dungeon master's death, every creature along with the dungeon itself, will cease to exist. Knowing what they must do, our MC simultaneously casts multiple fire javelin spells, bombarding the demon and the dungeon master, forcing the demon to go on the defensive. With some time to think, our MC knows that the demon's defense will last longer than their offense, therefore they must bet on their next attack to land. Telling Fran about the plan, Fran dashes forward, allowing the demon to attack multiple times, but this allows our MC to confirm that the demon has a 3 second cool down, between each magic spell. Using this opening, our MC orders Fran to toss him towards the dungeon master, all whilst she distracts the demon with fire. Sadly the demon had anticipated Fran's movements, throwing up a barrier to protect the dungeon master, but in that split second, our MC changes directory heading straight towards the demon's core. Barely able to stop our MC from breaking its crystal core, the demon suddenly hears our MC speak, as our MC channels his remaining mana into himself, allowing him to cut right through the demon's core. With its core destroyed, the demon shrivels up, but since our MC had used up all his mana, he too begins to shatter. Rushing to our MC's side, Fran pulls what is left over of our MC's sword, clinging onto our MC for dear life. As she begins to weep, our MC destroys the mood, stating that he is able to easily self-regenerate, easily repairing his body with the demon's crystal core. Mad that the MC tricked her, Fran gives in, just happy that our MC is alive. Unable to accept that a little girl was able to slay such a powerful demon, the dungeon master looks to the core, hoping to gain more power, and expand its goblin army. Unfortunately, Fran uses the demon's sword, destroying the dungeon master summoning tool, whilst claiming the dungeon master bracelet item, said to be able to revive any creature one time. As the dungeon master gives up, the core begins to dim, the core suddenly shatters, returning the darkened room into its original state. Declaring that the dungeon had been conquered, Fran rushes over to Donadrond and the others, filling them in on how she had cleared the dungeon. Noticing a corpse, one of the adventurers realizes that the corpse belongs to a B-rank demon, making Fran at least B-rank herself. Happy to see that Fran is okay, Donadrond pats Fran on the head, only to grab hold of her, as he scolds Fran for being so reckless, not stopping until Fran shrivels up. Whilst Fran was getting scolded, our MC was admiring both Fran and his level ups, stating that Fran is now level 25, having doubled her level for 12. Asking if Fran is happy, she ignores our MC, stating that our MC just watched as she was being lectured, but our MC cheers Fran up, as he reminds her of the curry he'll be making tonight. Now in a good mood, Fran reasons that it would be best to level up their sword technique, seeing how useful it was, against a demon that had superior mana pool. Next, Fran asks about the skill steal ability, with our MC agreeing that the skill will be very useful, as it's able to be cast on creatures that don't have a crystal core, meaning other humans. Leveling it up to level 10, the skill steal ability now has a 100% success rate, but the drawbacks are that you can only steal one skill from any creature, and that it can only be recast every 432 hours. Wanting to try it out immediately, Fran stops our MC from stealing from an innocent adventurer. That night, Fran is forced to report on her recent dungeon raid, being the one to slay the dungeon boss. Thankful that Fran was able to mitigate any casualties the demon could have caused, the guild leader appreciates Fran handing over the demon's corpse, as it is quite rare material. But the guild master gets serious, demanding to know where the demon's crystal core, 
a top tier item, is. Without a second wasted, Fran states that she had destroyed the core during the fight, forcing our guild master to not press any further. Before Fran can say anything more, a mysterious man busts in, declaring that Fran is lying. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like and comment.